Hey, Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera, I'm going to show you how I cut transition lenses for this can only be one thing. What other frame does this? This is the Folding Wayfair, model number 4105. In fact, Mo down in St. Petersburg, Florida, owner of Mad Beach Tattoo Company, and of course he's got a great bar down there too, so whenever you're in the area and you need to wet your whistle, hey go have a drink with him but this is he has sent me his folding wayfarers and i'm going to cut transition lenses for him he likes to ride motorcycles so I, i've taken his original dangerous glass lenses out that if he ever gets a pub, pebble to the face or any rock or anything while he's riding that slices open and cuts his eye wide open so i'm going to put in much safer transition lenses the first thing i need to do other than drop his frame it's fighting me it's still alive as I need to trace the shape of his frame. I'm using my Santa Nelly. This is my $30,000 LE1000 patternless edger. And the stylus is coming up and is tracing the shape of the right lens. Then it's going to move over and trace the shape of the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy just like this one, any genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame, and you will receive free, clear, single vision prescription or non-prescription fashion lenses. Of course, that's what he's getting. These are gonna be non-prescription transition lenses with anti-glare coating to eliminate glare when driving on his motorcycle. So, I'm gonna pull up the shape of his lens on the computer. If this were a prescription, I'd put in his pupillary distance, but I'm just gonna have it match the frame. That's just shop talk for anyone following at home. These are polycarbonate lenses that I'm going to cut on the soft cycle due to the anti-glare coating and this is going into a Xyle frame which is just an old school name for plastic. I know in advance that this frame cuts a little large so I'm going to take it down in size just for a little bit. I may have to cut the lens down even more but I'm just going to get it close to its final size and then we'll go from there. So these are his protective, these are his lenses inside of the protective sleeves that I will take out now. Set that one down. Let's do the same thing for the other lens take it out and I need to attach this to it this is a block as it's called of course I like to call it Jenny from around the block but this needs to be attached to the lens this is what's going to hold it in place while it's cutting so I need to stick this onto the lens so I need a double-sided adhesive sticker and when you know it 3M the same people who brought you post-it notes make some double-sided adhesive stickers so the black side is the sticky side I'm going to stick that onto the block pull the tape away on this side to make my side sticky and I'm going to stick that onto the first lens. I'm going to do the same thing now for the second lens which could be the right or the left it really doesn't matter since these are non-prescription but one feature about the anti-glare coating is that it's a hydrophobic lens meaning that it hates water. Ooh, what's that mean? It just means that uh, it can be a little bit more slippery while I'm working on it. So I'm going to attach another sticker onto the back side just so it grips really well inside the machine. The other nice thing about it being hydrophobic is that you never need a liquid cleaner ever again to clean your lenses. Um, because no matter what water you apply or liquid, just like when you wax your car and it rains, the water beads right off, any liquid is going to do the same thing. So all you need is one of the cleaning cloths that comes in your Ray-Ban case or I'm actually going to send you one of my premium microfiber cleaning cloths. So let's hit start. Now the first thing that's going to happen is these calipers are going to come down and it's going to trace the shape of the right side of the frame at first starting with the rear surface, the concave surface which is closest to your eyelashes and then it's going to move over and trace the front surface of the lens also known as the convex side of the lens all the while measuring the thickness of the lens of course this being non-prescription is going to be thin but should this be a strong prescription this is knowing where to place the bevel so it will fit best inside the frame now the actual cutting wheel is down here on the bottom left it's that lighter color wheel that's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper that's going to grind away your polycarbonate material and this wheel in the center with that little channel, that valley, that's what's going to cut the bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the frame. I will have to close the door in a moment, but I just want you to see as your lens touches down on the cutting wheel. So your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable, which is going to be very important while you're riding your motorcycle. It's also bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into it already. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, where your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin. 
So think of all the people who put on sunscreen down in Florida. You now have permanent sunscreen for your eyes that never needs to be reapplied. Now it also has the anti-reflective coating, which is three features in one. It's an anti-glare coating, which eliminates glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but also from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead fluorescent lights, any glare source. Now this lens I just took out does not have that coating. So you can see how I have the fluorescent lights above me. You can see how the light reflects off the fluorescent lights of, of the lens. So it's an anti-reflection lens so that you don't see those reflections or when someone's looking at you, they don't see their reflection back in the lens. And honestly, cosmetically, this is one of the important reasons people buy it. If someone takes a picture with a flash, you won't see the flash lit up in the lens. You'll see just your eyes in the picture. So. Some people get it just for that reason, the cosmetic feature, which is the second feature. The third feature that I like is it comes with the best scratch coating on any lens. So it's a million dollar machine that applies the anti-glare coating. And so they put the best scratch coating possible to protect that million dollar investment. Now your lens has moved over and it's actually getting the bevel put on there now. It was flat during the cutting cycle and has moved over for the bevel. Now if you notice, there is water running in the background but polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic and high index cut wet. In the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle, there are two water jets, one in the rear, one in the front, that's going to spray water onto the lens, but that's only to clean. There you go, I was just talking about you. You know, usually they don't make you proud when you want them to, but this time they did. But it's just washing away any optical debris, essentially optical sawdust that's left over from cutting your lenses. This does this for the last 20 seconds, and then once it's done, I'll take it out and we'll see if it fits in your frame. If not, I'll trim it down a little bit more so it does fit. The golden rule, you can always cut more off of a lens. You can never add it back on. So start a little bit large and then work your way down so it fits properly. And here it goes, it is stopping. So I'm gonna go ahead and take your lens out of the chuck once the machine stops and beeps at me and tells me it's okay to take it out of the chuck. Now I'm drying your lens off so it's not slippery anymore because it's embarrassing when you drop a lens on live TV. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do it. Now, Mo, just like you, your lens has some rough edges. <laughs> Sorry, I had to get a little jab there. Boom! Okay. Hey, we're old friends. I've been talking to you since yesterday. So, I'm going to remove those rough edges using my hand stone. It's completely flat. I can put my finger on it while it's running and my finger gets warm due to the friction. But it's that friction that allows me to apply what's known as the safety bevel. And essentially I've just melted away those rough edges and this white powdery substance that you just never see in Florida um, and is on the edge of this lens. This white powdery substance is called Schwarf. And I use my thumbnail to scrape it off the edge of your lens and I do it so much I've worn a bevel into my thumbnail. That's why I can't have nice thumbnails. But once it's all off of your lens and onto the counter, I carefully, very neatly, and very carefully and very precisely collect it into one pile, and then I wipe it on the floor. Because this is where I say, kids, stay in school. I went to school for years to learn how to make a mess like that. So kids, if you want to grow up and make a mess, you got to stay in school. So this is how we're going to mount your lenses. I'm going to tuck them in at the outside corner, which is closest to me. Then using my thumbs, I press down at the nose and it snaps right in. So I knew how much to pre-cut it in advance because I am the Ray-Ban kid. So I'm gonna flip this over to left or to L, which means not right. And then I'm gonna put it into the chuck. Of course, I like to call it the Charles because I don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. All right, more bad humor. Free bad humor with every pair of glasses. So it's gonna repeat the first process that you saw where it's gonna trace the shape of the left side of your frame this time. You can visualize that shape top bottom side temporal top bottom side temporal that's the temporal side um, but always starting with the rear surface the back surface zo i'm going to touch or mo i'm going to touch your back surface there we go now i'm going to touch your front surface see how that's like no sorry <laughs> i was never able to become a priest you know i shouldn't joke about this stuff people don't know me they could get offended by this stuff but uh nonetheless i'll atone for my sins one day but yeah, so once the left lens starts cutting, I'm going to continue to work on the right. So I apologize for my bad humor. I love what I do, so I joke around a lot. I do take my work very seriously. By the way, I just removed the block from your lens. It was no longer needed, so I removed that. And I'm going to remove this blue sticker, since that is no longer needed. 
and I just want to go ahead and clean your lens actually I'll do that at the very end since I got to clean the other one too it's a package deal I can't clean just one and I'm not doing it for for you I'm doing it for me I just want to remove all my fingerprints so you can't turn me into the FBI and collect that big reward that's out there for me but no as I was saying I do enjoy what I do so I do joke around I take my work very seriously but I do not take myself very seriously when you're as good as I am you can afford to joke around when you don't know what you're doing you better remain professional as long as you can when you're working with people in case they have any doubts about you so but this is a piece of cake if you need prescription lenses I can do it for your frame also it's just that Mo likes to ride motorcycles down in St. Petersburg, Florida, which is a great place. I got a brother down in Tampa. I go down a couple times a year. I'm have to stop in, have a drink at his bar, and see where the best places to ride are in, in Southwest Florida. But it's nice because if you notice, your lens is still completely flat, just like a nickel. I could take it out and stand on the counter. Now it's actually getting the bevel sliced into the edge of the lens and it's a knife like edge a very dull knife like me but in an emergency this edge could be used to cut a wet piece of tissue but you would have to soak the tissue into a bucket of water overnight and then using all your strength press down with the lens and you might be able to cut through that piece of tissue that's how sharp it is you're not going to be opening any clam shells with it but do you have clams down there in florida showing my ignorance I don't even know I'm sure you get them shipped in if you don't have them off the warm waters you have down there but old Bubba says you got some shrimps some scrimps you got them down there and some warm lot of water lobsters I just got back from Maine where I do not know why the lobsters are not as extinct in Maine when every single restaurant serves them to everybody all night every night Okay, so your left lens is done. I'm going to go ahead and take it out of the Chuck, or as I like to say, the Charles. Okay, how about Charlie? I'm going to take it out of the Charlie. Now I'm going to draw your lens off again. Back to the handstone a second time to remove the rough edges that are left over from the cutting cycle. Real fast with the safety bevel. Real fast with scraping the Schwarf off. If you're a Mel Brooks fan, this is where you say, may the Schwarf be with you, but except um, it's not going to be with you. I'm scraping it off and I'm leaving it on the counter. And you know what happens once it's all off your lens and all onto the counter. Are you ready for this? You ready? Watch this. Kids, kids. Woo, behind the back. Look at that. Kids, kids, stay in school. How many times I got to tell you this? So, let's go ahead and get your left lens mounted. I have the left side closest to me that is empty. I'm not trying to reach across the frame. And Mo, this is important. If you ever need prescription lenses in the future, this is how you're going to mount them. You just have the empty side closest to you. You tuck the lens in at the side closest to you, then using your thumbs, you press down at the nose, which is the thickest part of the frame and it's designed to have pressure applied there. So this block is no longer needed. And when you're as strong as I am, you can rip these off with your bare hands. Look at that. No tool is needed. So that is off. Let me pull the sticker off. I do want to go ahead and clean your lenses at this point. And this is a good time for me to tell everyone that when you get these, of course, you've been wearing these for a while, but anyone else who gets a new pair, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So if you get these and they're too loose or they're too tight or one side is higher than the other, because 80% of people have one ear that's higher than the other. That's why glasses sit crooked. And I'm no exception. When I take mine off and I set mine on the counter, mine wobble, but they don't when they're on my head. So, and today I'm wearing color... Oh, what is this color? I can't see it with my glasses off. It is the 811, which is the blue rubber and the new Wayfarer. I am a new Wayfarer guy, although I'm tempted to get one of these folding Wayfarers just because they are so cool and it gives you the classic look. So, these are your lenses all cleaned up with... Hang on, I see a fingerprint there. No fingerprints for the FBI. But these are your lenses while they are clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate them, meaning that I'm going to turn them dark. So I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little Transitions brand box. And as you will see, it takes about 30 seconds for transition lenses to darken, about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15 to lighten when they come back inside. Now, Mo, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will turn dark on day one. Give them two weeks and they can continue to darken every day for the first two weeks. 
until they finish their break-in period and they'll be at their work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is when you're behind the windshield in a traditional car because your windshield has UV protection. Anything after 1992 has UV protection and so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun or your upholstery doesn't rot but that's what prevents transition lenses from darkening inside of a car. Now in a convertible or a motorcycle they will darken. Plus they're temperature sensitive meaning that when it's 90 and above they just won't get as dark as they will when it's 85 and below. I like to remind everyone when it's 95 degrees you're miserable, they're miserable. Nothing likes to work 100% you or your glasses when it's 95 and above out there. So this is the first time they've darkened. It's hard for you to really see that on with the GoPro camera and the videos I've watched. But trust me, this is much darker than it appears. And they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks, providing they're exposed to the sun. So that's that. If anyone has any questions about what I can and can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Mo with Mad Beach Tattoo Company down in St. Petersburg, Florida. I hope you enjoyed watching me cut transition lenses with an anti-glare coating for your folding Wayfair model number 4105. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.